Groovy. Welcome to Horror After Midnight. I'm your host, KC, joined tonight by Slinky, Jalo, and Saga. How's it going tonight, guys? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Ah, excited about this one. Oh, hell yeah. We're talking about an OG, son. Yeah, a standard Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. The original. The original, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, don't even know where to start with this movie. Um, we call it first Head Cheese, right? Yeah, Head Cheese, <laughs> uh, Stalking Leatherface. They, they had a few names. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Get right into it. Let's see. You're the guest, so saw a guy. We'll throw it to you first. Um, oh, shit. Wow. Oh, no. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Numbers. I'm looking right <laughs> at the paper. Let's see. God, man. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974 horror film. Uh, written by Kim Henkel, Toby Hooper, directed by Toby Hooper, produced by Toby Hooper, uh, starring Marilyn Burns, Gunnar Hansen. Um, the production company was Vortex, distributed by Bryanston distri- uh, Distribution Company. It was released October 11th, 1974. Uh, now, the budget fluctuates depending on where you read it at. Uh, it was estimated at 80000 to 140000 and it made $30.9 million. In the box office. Oh, nice! So that was a lot of money in those days. Yeah, none of this yeah. is adjusted for inflation or anything. So, you know, that was a large fortune back then. Um, but yeah, this is a big one. The OG, the original. Um, so yeah, first impressions, man. Um, you know, how, you like, know- how were you when you saw it? Like <laughs> the, the situation. The situation. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, when I first saw this film, I was actually a freshman in high school because uh, this was one of those films that everybody had all talked about. And you hear about this film a lot because this one they they used to call the video nasties uh, in the UK. And because of this film, it started off this whole spawn of shit like, oh, can't sell rated R movies to fucking kids and blah, 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 blah. Um, And it's kind of ironic because with this shit um it's a great fucking film but there's not that much blood into it i mean originally toby hooper he was trying to go for a pg rating but because of like the the whole aspect of this being scary as fuck with somebody with a chainsaw they still gave it an r rating Mm -hmm. um with with that being said when i first saw this film i was like okay this is all hyped up i can't wait to see this and at first i was like ain't no fucking blood like but then when you start seeing the, the beauty of the film and what it is and how it's all about storytelling and how it like builds up like mental power and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it, it plays off the less is more. And you think about it, it's like, oh, shit. Um, yeah, these are things to your imagination. Yeah. 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 And when, when, you're, when your thoughts start running wild, man, that's, that's when it gets crazy. Um, I like this film, too, because, I mean, you never know. Not just in Texas. I know there's some shit here in Cali. Uh, you go out in the middle of nowhere, and the country areas like Tranquility and like some of these outskirts of towns, um, it fucking looks like Texas Chainsaw Massacre out there. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I got those places in Florida too. Trust me. It's oh like, shit, Florida man. <laughs> yeah, Florida man is real. Oh, you know. But it it was a good film, man. Like I always enjoyed it, and this ended up being like one of my favorites. But it was the OG, the pioneer. And you think about this was very first slasher film because nothing like this has ever been made. You had this, and then it brought up um, what was the next film that it brought up? Uh, the town that dreaded sundown. And after that, that's when you know you started seeing the birth of slashers. Really, um, I guess you could say Black Christmas kind of fell into this because of this film, right? They they came out I think the same year, nineteen seventy four. Yeah, um, but yeah, they're they're two. Um, yeah, when I'm gonna be long winded on this one, I already know it. So when I start, it's gonna be like, Bruh! like I'm not, <laughs> I I fucking love this movie. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, I don't remember exactly when I first saw it. Uh, you know, I watched a lot of horror films, but um, like he was saying, like uh, everything is kind of like left to the imagination. Um, that was great, but in comparison to. to to today's films um nowhere near as gory uh but the uh like the score of the film it was really creepy and great music um, oh the sound effects storytelling yeah. Uh, yeah yeah 
one really creepy uh, brother that's like riding with them with the uh, blood on his face. He was great, really good actor. <laughs> uh, all around, it's a great movie. Um, it's just something like if you're expecting it to be anything like today's stuff, if you haven't seen it already, nothing at all like it. Just like barely any gore, like he was saying. Uh, mm-hmm. But great movie all around. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, you know, you compare it to today's stuff. It's, I think, all the movie going audiences we've all been desensitized oh to yeah crazy stuff you know saw movies we were just talking about that yeah uh, hostile was another one so it's like you've you know um yeah, there's no like I, oh my god like parts where like, somebody's getting ripped in half like, yeah. like, ripped, uh, like cutting down the middle or nothing nothing like yeah. that well, it goes to show you how again low budget movies you have to think outside the box in order to to pull stuff off and yeah. the fact that there's hardly any blood in that movie is fucking pretty awesome because the name of it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's the name of it. So you yeah. kind of know what you're getting, you know. Um, but yeah, the hype. It, the, yeah. It, first time I saw the flick, I was in high school. I was way late to the fucking show on this one. <laughs> Again, my buddy and I had talked about it for fucking like a year before that. So I put it on and I'm, I wasn't let down at all because the movie's amazing. Um, it's so, it's so well-crafted, man. Um, I, I don't even know where to start on this fucking movie. In 1968, <laughs> Night of the Living Dead came out and that movie was different than the horror that preceded it. It wasn't, you know, you had to go to Romania for the horror or you had to go to Victorian London to be the horror movie or anything that was in the pennsylvania countryside and these were your neighbors trying to break into your house and fucking eat you nobody ever seen anything like that before and that really kicked the door open for a lot of stuff last house on the left came out after that. oh yeah so, i remember that one it's crazy. yeah those two superstars um that movie again it was normal people well not normal people they're psychopaths and stuff <laughs> but they're <laughs> it's not a vampire or it's not a, a giant monster or something like that. It's like these are yeah. these are real people you could run into in the supermarket. Um so that I think those two movies really helped pave the way for this movie to come out. And it's shot like a documentary, that cinema verte, I think that's what they call it. I don't know. I'm not a film mm-hmm. snob. Um but it's like it's just real dark and it's a simple story man this chick's going to check her grandfather's tombstone because there was grave robbings and stuff um real simple story and it's just i don't know um the psychological horror is dialed up to like 11 on this one yeah and again the name is misleading to a point because it's oh okay it's gonna be a bloodbath and there's there's people that still say it's gory. They're like, oh, it's one of the goriest movies ever made. I'm like, yeah, you haven't fucking seen it. Like, it's, yeah, it couldn't have. I only saw Blood, I think, twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when I think when Franklin gets killed, and then spoilers, kids. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's you know, uh, really just I mean, where to start? Huh. Again, I'm just babbling at this point. Uh, I think Toby you Hooper start with the uh, characters. The characterization. Every one of the characters is fucking amazing. From Sally to Kurt to even Frank. Frank was the one that, you know, the first five minutes of the film, hey, pull over, I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> he goes out to the side to pee in the cup and he falls over. Ah, throw a kiss in the air. Yeah. yeah. But he's so he's such a weenie whiner. Yeah. And it's like, that dude plays that character fucking right on the money. Cause oh you just God. you don't want to be anywhere near him. You're just kind of like, dude, ah, Franklin's going over there. Let's go over this way. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. you fucking brought bad luck everywhere they went, dude. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? You know. Um, yeah, it's it, it set up a lot of uh, slasher tropes and stuff and didn't realize it was doing it, you know. Um, the whole teenage thing, uh, backwoods. And plus, it was back in the 70s, so there weren't cell phones. Like, for me, I think modern technology really kills a lot of the horror movies, modern horror movies. Yeah, because oh, yeah, they can't just like call the cops. Like, yeah. Well, you're so far out, your cell phone might not even work. You might have sure. it, but it doesn't you know? <laughs> and then it's it's fucking the, like you said, the characters. 
everybody plays their role like spot on like the the dad the cook huh drayton sawyer um huh. he's awesome in the movie and like when they stop at the gas station you kind of know or you get the something feeling, was up yeah something's not he's like oh we need yeah. gas we yeah. ain't got no gas he got no gas <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that guy yeah. was great I love that one scene where uh, he fucking beats the damn girl with the damn broom. That shit was funny as hell. <laughs> He's like, don't worry, Dur. Don't worry, girl. I'm going to help you here. And then he gets the broom. Whack, whack, whack. Just, whack. Yeah, just, like, just fucking just <laughs> knocks the shit out of her until she goes down. He grabs a bag and ties her up. Oh, don't worry. We're going to take care of you. He drives it's, her to the fucking it's, truck. Because it's like, they, it's a horror movie. Like, you know you're watching a horror movie. But there's mm-hmm. so much, not so much, but there's a lot of absurdly funny shit in that movie. Where it's, wow, that's a family. Yeah. Those guys, like, especially when it, my favorite line is, look what your brother did to the door. <laughs> yeah. He's got a chick with a bag over her head. Yeah. Bring home so they can fucking eat her. And, and he's worried about, about the fucking door. The fucking front door. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So. Well, um, you know, th- there's so many memorable scenes in this film. I, I think my favorite is the first time you see Leatherface. Because, the oh, you know, yes. Kirk goes in. And he's like, hello, and then he hears a pig squeal. And I don't know if that was, like, a call that Leatherface did to bring him in. Because he's like, what the fuck? And then he starts running in. He slips and falls, looks up. Whack! And just fucking knocks out. The shot of Leatherface is like, whoa! Yeah, because you didn't expect that. Like, what the fuck? And then it just goes from ground up and then, like, zooms in. And then the, the camera just, like, fucking smacks it, like, with the hammer. Um... I love the actual realistic approach that they did where he got hit with a hammer and he started seizing out. Yeah. yeah. You, you'd never see anything like that. I mean, not even the yeah. fucking news at the time would show that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was cool how they did that. And then the fact that, you know, his girlfriend goes in there and she runs out and then he chases after her and, and they show all the weird shit with like the skeletons. Um, and you know what's funny about that? Is that they were such on a shoestring budget <laughs> that they actually mm. bought real skeletons from India with perfect <laughs> teeth. And <laughs> skeleton farm in India. Yeah. And they fucking took the shit apart and actually built it to for props to this movie. So um it kind of blows me away. Like, man, these fucking people are fucking weird or they were creative or something. But you know, this was inspired by Eddie Ging, you know, the, the serial killer. So I I give that. But you're a planes field. Yeah, you know, and and you could see a lot of that kind of inspiration, but it was tied into the aspect of the horror, what he did. So, you know, he would kill people, grave rob, whatever, and it played off of that. But the the fact is that they still built the great story, and everybody was all different in the characters. Um, Mm. I would say even Edwin Neal, who played the hitchhiker, you know, in the beginning, where he... uh, Because you're thinking, like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's like, oh, I'll take a pitch for you. Well, yeah, <laughs> and then after that, it's like, a good picture. It's a good picture. Yeah, I mean, fucking yeah, Frank like, was give all me two out. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that scene. Give me two dollars. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and then he started fucking with Frank, and he cut him. And then they start messing with Frank. They're all like, "Yeah, Frank, you see, he got he cut your hand. He got your blood now. He's gonna come uh, after yeah. you now. Come for you. He knows where you live now, Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! But you know. The, the whole story, the, the other thing, too, that a lot of people forget about is that this movie had a lot of hard camera shots to mm-hmm. do some of the effects. So when you see Sally, like, sitting there and she's screaming, it's just like, like, a bunch of hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it was you shot know, really well. Yeah. And it was just, it was shot well, but it was also shot in a way where it's like, you have a bunch of different cuts, but they put all together. So that way you have it so it, it shows, like, the madness. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah, um, I believe they shot each scene, like, from all kinds of different angles. It's not all at once because being such a low budget. So that's how they kind of, like, edited edit together in such a way that it came out like that. Yeah. So I know the dinner scene, they said that took 27 hours to shoot. They shot that. What? But yeah, no shit. No shit. Damn. Uh, they were, like, I guess when Sally, she lost her voice or some shit from screaming so fucking much. Like... <laughs> But that's, that, that whole scene's bonkers, man. When you watch it, like mm-hmm. it's holy shit. These motherfuckers are crazy. Like it's just, you know. Yeah, fucking grandpa. Um, he he like was passed out. <laughs> it's it just it's it's amazing the 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 stuff they were able to 
achieve, I guess, with this flick, with uh, mm-hmm. all this stuff, man. But when you, th- that's, I think that's my favorite scene in the movie, too. The scene you said about when you first see Leatherface. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it took everything out of my mouth. But when he slams that door, it does that fucking jump. There's like yeah. a part like where it's like, holy oh, shit. shit. <laughs> the whole scene happens so fucking quick. And again, there's a bunch of edits in it, a bunch of cuts. Um, yeah. And he, ah, oh, man, so good. You know, but um, what was it? The scene with Franklin, he shot that over his shoulder. And I guess they were like flinging blood on Leatherface as he was like cutting into him and stuff. Oh, that's like, that's amazing, man. That's that's amazing how they did that stuff. And that's a scary yeah. scene. It's real quiet. There's that and it gets me every fucking time yeah, like Resident dude, Evil man where he, he's like, yeah. Sally, stop, Sally. And then all of a sudden he comes out of nowhere and you see him. <gasps> like, just, yeah, dude, it's crazy. Oh dude. And and, kind of, yeah, get him. Eh, Franklin sucks. Like just, <laughs> <laughs> we, and you know what's crazy is that they show that he fucking chases her throughout the whole field and everything and she ran she runs from the fucking house all the way to the gas station which yeah. the vibe i got was like a clear couple miles um just non-stop and fucking yeah. leatherface just didn't didn't care just was cutting everything <laughs> um yeah 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 yeah, you know, and it's just overall, this was a great fucking story how they tied into a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. The grandpa, I laugh about it because we all had that grandpa or our dads, you know, like they're not your grandpa or dads if they're not fucking falling asleep and all this shit, you know, during Thanksgiving dinner and shit. Um, yeah. And the vibe that I get with this film, and I got to ask both of you guys, do you see this as a summer film or a Thanksgiving film? And I say Thanksgiving because... Thanksgiving's about family coming together and eating meat, right? Um, You could say this is a summer film because the fact of it's happened in the middle of the summer heat wave in Texas. So what do you guys think? I already know my answer, but yeah, go ahead. (laughs) I'd say probably like maybe around September, maybe like late summer, right Mm -hmm. before autumn. That's good, possibly. (laughs) But definitely not like really Thanksgiving because they're not really giving thanks. They're just you know, getting ready to eat somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I like autumn. Autumn sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, autumn. Yeah. Autumn in Texas. Autumn in uh, Texas. Because it's always hot in Texas. Yeah, it is always hot in fucking Texas. Um, <laughs> I'd say summer just because the fact that and I was going to mention this sometime in the episode, but when you punch the fucking movie, everybody has like a sheen to them. Yeah. From sweat. Yeah. Their shirts always have the little sweat marks and stuff like that. And it's one of those movies where you can almost find yourself feeling hot just from watching it, watching other people like sweat their ass off and shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, you know, with the heat wave and shit like this. So I, I always attribute it to summer. Just, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those movies where it's like you can see the heat, where you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and living in Florida, it's like, ah, oh, I know what that feels like, son of a bitch. Yeah. Like, well, let me ask you this: after seeing the sheen and the sweat and the heat, does that build up your anxiety while watching this film? You know what? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Mind think... blown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how it builds up the anxiety, and that's the beauty of this fucking film. It's little subtle things like that that Toby Hooper like put into the account. Because if you see this shit now, okay, your, your mind's starting to race. You're, you're starting to think, okay, it's hot. It probably smells like shit out there. Yeah, do you know <laughs> that house smells like a fart? Like, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> it smells like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's all that random shit that plays out, dude. I think the biggest anxiety for me was the ending of the film. Where, you know, you don't know if Sally's going to survive or not because they're trying to get Grandpa to fucking, you know, hit the hammer in the head. And he clocked her once or twice. Her yeah, head was all fucked yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah. she finally just said, fuck it. And here she is in chocolates and fucking sandals. Breaks out, runs, <laughs> jumps to the window, and she's all fucked up running. And everybody's chasing after her. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Um, the brother, he's, he's hitting her with a straight razor. While yeah. She's running. Just it's come just out. Like, oh, damn. Yeah. Um, and you know, the crazy part of that scene is that they actually showed the the brother getting fucking run over. Um, yeah. 
and they did that on a budget. I mean, if you watch it in slow motion, or if you even just watch just a quick second, you can see it looks like they're they're running over a dummy and not over the the actual actor. But when they yeah. actually show it, like they show it so quick, and then they show Sally's face with the anxiety. Ah, yeah, it just yeah. it makes you think like, what the fuck? Um, and you know, the thing that I liked about this film is that it it didn't have like. It, it didn't put barriers on things because you see the truck driver. He was a big black dude. And then he comes out and he's like, oh, shit. Yeah, he <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, he was like, tried, yeah, he was like, oh, shit, I'm trying to save this chick. And then all of a sudden he closed the door. Leatherface trying to gun all this shit. And he was the smart one. He's he like jumps out of the other side, sees a big ass wrench, takes it. He runs. And this part still scares the fuck out of me because he throws the wrench at Leatherface, yeah. falls down. And then he actually, you know, used the chainsaw to cut his leg. But behind the scenes, he actually fucking used the real chainsaw to cut through a pouch. Which, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. That's, that's, which that's... you'll never see that shit happen again in today's times. But the oh, fact no. that he actually, like, cut through a pouch and then you can see he squeezes his legs to get that shit out. Um, and then the ending right there where you see, like, the other car come in. Um, like, that right there builds the anxiety. All of a sudden, the car dies. She gets in there. At the split mm-hmm. second, he was able to fucking drive off and run after her. And he, you can see he fucking cuts her hair with a chainsaw. He's, I would say he's right on her ass, man. He's yeah. Right, he's, he can touch the truck. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and that was what's so fucking crazy, man. Because, like, you don't expect that. But then, you know, you, you think, like, oh, shit. Okay, well, now that she went one way, the truck driver <laughs> went the other way. They never said what happened to him. See, I, I was going to say, I always wondered what happened to that other truck driver. <laughs> like, he fucking leave that shit? He leave his rig? Yeah. You yeah. Well, you know what's cool about that? There's a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming out on Netflix. So mm-hmm. they might tie in that. And that, because out of all the Texas Chainsaw Massacres, they never gone back to the Santa Maria. They never said what happened to the truck. Mm-hmm. So I think they're, they're, they might explain that. I don't know. But the way how the ending ended with him dancing around with the sun coming up, that was just such a fucking beautiful shot. Yeah, it uh, is so pretty. Like, uh, there's yeah. a lot of shit in that movie that's pretty. It sounds weird, fucked up to say, but there's... <laughs> like, it, it has a weird beauty to it, a lot of the stuff, especially the furniture that that yeah. guy made. Um, that's crazy. You know, it looks, looks like a taxidermy's office. Yeah. But just... You know, the feathers on the floor, like the house is all fucked up. Um, oh, yeah. Once you see Leatherface come out the first time, that's when you start thinking anything can happen. Like, you know, who who directed this movie again? Kind of. Kind <laughs> of and um, just it's it just goes to show you, man, what a limited budget and ingenuity and uh, 110 degree days. What you can what you can do, man. And yeah. a little movie magic. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you pay attention to the to the little subtle things. Um, Leatherface wore like three different masks in this film. He wore mm-hmm. the pretty lady mask at the end, his original one, and then he wore an old lady one in the middle when mm-hmm. he cut down the door and they were beating his ass with it. Um, yeah. You know, there, there was little subtle things, but then the other big scene is where you know he puts Kurt on the table and then he hangs his girlfriend on the meat hook. Um, like that fact th- this movie was the cannibal holocaust of its time because <laughs> what cannibal yeah. holocaust is still like remembered for was the gore and everything and like mm-hmm. you said everybody swears there was blood and gore up and down this it wasn't it was all about mind power um, it's, it's that name man the power of a name yes you know just massacre chainsaw it's like whoa because uh this this was one of the first ones to use uh to open the door for slashers to use like power tools last yeah. house at the end the dad had the chainsaw when he mm-hmm. takes on uh Kirk, but this one just blew it open and was like oh yeah kills people with a chainsaw like you know so and it, it, the way that they made the chainsaw they made it so fucking scary because it's not a big chainsaw Nasty. yeah I mean, yeah it looks like this old rusted piece of shit that you find in the shack. Thank something you. that they ain't gonna start. See, my you grandfather know? had that chainsaw. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, 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 every day. Yes, it, it's something, something you see. You know, and the fact that when they first showed it, 
Um, and I thought this was funny. They had to keep filming the scene because the damn thing wouldn't start. And then finally, when it started on the first try, they showed it. And the fact how he was moving the chainsaw and his movement made it look like he was cutting up uh, Kurt. And it was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Um, it's just random stuff that you see with this. Like, this movie really blew the doors off and started the whole slasher genre. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's the OG, man. Like, yeah. Um, I don't think we can say anything that probably hasn't been said before or, you know, whichever. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's, it's a standard, man. That's, that's, it's one of those movies where it's like, all right, you're a horror fan, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Read this. It'll be on the test. Um, <laughs> it's just, you have to, you have to. Yeah. Well, this is on the Mount Rushmore of horror movies. This, yeah, it's a big one. It's a big yeah. one. Yeah. This one, Michael Myers, like anything that started in the 70s, that's really pioneered to what you got in the 80s, the glory years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thing that you got to think about, too, without this film, you wouldn't have The Town That Dreaded Sundown. You wouldn't have Black Christmas. Yeah. 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 You yeah. wouldn't have all those early ones that led into the golden, the glory years of the horror films or the horror genre, I should say, you know? Um, well, what is it? You got it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, no. I, I was going to say, because this, this really, like, blew the lid off of it. This kind of, like, okay, well, if you can use a killer in Texas with power tools, then the fucking, it, like, boom. Like, everything yeah. is endless now. Because, I mean, they tried it again with, with the whole Texarkana thing with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was pretty cool how they did that, because they shot it the same thing, like a mockumentary. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Same thing how this one was. And they tried catching lightning in a bottle twice, and they realized, okay, well... You can't do the same fucking thing twice, so let's try something different, and there you go. <laughs> mm. You know, then you have something like Black Christmas. But the good thing is, when you think about this film and Black Christmas, right, it still trips me out to think this. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was classic American horror. Black Christmas, believe it or not, still, this still, like, a lot of people don't really know this, but Black Christmas was a Canadian horror film. Yeah, yeah. It's and, one of the uh, because what the Canadians put out a bunch of good slashers, prom night, uh, my Terrence, bloody Valentine, my bloody Valentine, fucking love yeah, it. <laughs> uh, curtains. That's another one, a little yeah, lesser, uh, yeah. No, Canadians put out some good shit. Happy birthday to me, I love that, yeah. um, but yeah, no, this movie is uh, a great contributor to uh, the horror we have now. We wouldn't have any of this stuff if it wasn't mm-hmm. for um, Texas Chainsaw, um. So yeah, let's uh yeah, I don't know. Final final words on the film. Was everybody <laughs> it's gonna be an odd question to fucking answer. <laughs> like... Uh can you hear him? No, I can't. No, pull your mic out. Say uh scratch that. Oh. Yep. Yeah, can you hear me? explains it. I was talking <laughs> earlier. I was like, maybe it's all good. I'll cut that shit out. It's fine, man. You know. Uh, but yeah, that's a great movie. Uh if you haven't already seen it, I don't know how you wouldn't have, but <laughs> definitely definitely see it. Uh it's like we've been saying, it's a, a must see for anyone that's a horror fan. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, because and it well, it kind of started its whole genre to the like backwoods cannibal kind of thing <laughs> whatever we go on for hours about this fucking movie um, <laughs> you know, it's good man it's really good mm-hmm. uh, highly rec- you can't recommend it enough if you're a fan of slasher flicks you have to watch it uh, oh, yeah. oh definitely yeah. don't be fooled by the name <laughs> nope. go in with an open mind and pay attention to the storytelling don't pay attention to the gore or anything um, the gore comes later on in the sequels, but this is about the real bread and butter to the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the score is great. I mean, oh god, yes, the sound effects and everything with it. The music in this movie is like creepy, thing because it's just oh, yeah. a bunch of noises and just ah, uh, you know, yeah. So yeah, it sounds like I think it would sound. That makes sense. Like <sighs> you know, just weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, huh. anyway. it's it's easy to freak you out with this movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, all right. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. <laughs> Go watch it. 
It will be on the test. So, oh, shit. <laughs> it better be on your Mount Rushmore. That's right. It better be. Yeah, it has to be in your collection. It has to be. So, <laughs> but, so yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out. Hell yeah. I'm going to this shit because I don't even know. <laughs> I right. It's all uncomfortable and weird. So uh, It's all good. Uh, be like, if you will, follow us uh, the next few episodes, if you would be so kind, because we're going to do uh, some of the heavy hitters of horror and their remakes, good or bad. We're still going to subject ourselves to them so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Not all remakes are bad. Not no, all remakes are bad. Some of them are damn good. <laughs> But, uh, but it yeah, should be fun. Remake. Yep. So who, I say, who, who knows what's going to pop huh. up right now? Could be a zombie flick. Could be a slasher. Ooh. Yeah. A good I'm sh- just dabbling at this point. Huh. So, but, uh, <laughs> so yeah, join us next time, man, for the remake of Texas Chainsaw, which is, uh, I want to get into it because I'll ruin it. But it's, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm getting next excited time. for this one. Yeah. Until next time. Yeah. Uh, Let's go watch it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre now. Yeah, go watch it. And like I said it's gonna be on the test, dude. So go watch it. Um, yeah, fuck it. Let's go watch a zombie flick. <laughs> no, that was all right. Um, yeah, I, I need to figure out what the hell is going on with my mic because used to having all the time with my old mic, and I switched to this mic and it didn't do it at all. And now it's doing it like every episode. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh,